If you're new to Minecraft or maybe just trying to get back into it after a long time of not playing and you're not sure what to do when starting a new survival world, then this video is going to be perfect for you. I'll be showing you the first 50 things that I do when starting a new world that will easily get you past the first few nights and leave you set up ready to take on the rest of your world. The first thing I like to do is to commemorate the start of my world, maybe that's by keeping hold of the first block I mined, or even taking a screenshot of the coordinates for the exact block that I spawned in on and going back to do something with it later. Of course, shortly after that, you're going to want to punch down your first tree. You can then open up your inventory and craft one of those logs into a crafting table, along with some sticks to make a wooden pickaxe. Now you're going to quickly upgrade this thing by collecting three cobblestone and crafting yourself a stone pick. There's really no need to keep using the wood for any longer than necessary. With your brand new tool, you can collect at least 14 more cobblestone, specifically 14 because there's two for a sword, one for a shovel, three for an axe and eight for a furnace. You can obviously gather more, it's not going to hurt at all. Before you head down to the caves, there are two super important things to do. Number one, kill or shear enough sheep to get yourself three walls so that you can make a bed and skip the night time if needed. Number two, gather food. Of course, you'll probably have some mutton from the sheep, but it's going to be a good idea to get a little bit more. So unless you plan on setting up base nearby your spawn, I'd recommend just slicing everything on site. Alternatively, you can go diving for cod and salmon, which is quite often the preferred method. Just make sure to keep an eye on your air bubbles. Super quickly, I just want to say that if you're enjoying the video, please feel free to give it a like. I don't usually ask for that, so I'm seeing if it actually makes a difference me butting into my own video and asking you to do something. Also, subscribe if you want. Okay, thanks. Back to the video. Once you've got your bed and enough food, we're now ready to go mining. Have a look around on the surface for any open caves that are easily accessible. The first thing we're looking for down here is coal, not only for fuel, but also torches so you can actually see what you're doing. You're also going to need some iron. I like to mine and smelt to at least 36 to get enough for four iron tools, four iron armor, and a bucket you can scoop up some water with later. At this point, you can keep mining if you'd like, but I generally head up to the surface and come back down later on, mainly because I need to top up my supplies of food and I also want to do some adventuring. So once I'm geared up, I go around my world, usually looking for generated structures such as villages, ruined portals and shipwrecks. Not only are these fun to explore, but they can also yield some pretty good early game loot. Whilst I'm out on my adventure, there's a few things I like to keep my eyes peeled for. Sugarcane for one, that's going to be really helpful later on. Cows to kill for their leather, also going to be of use for the same reason of making an enchanting setup. You need both paper and leather, so grab as much as you possibly can. If you come across any different types of trees, make sure you chop one down and save a sapling so you can replant it elsewhere. I also like to scout out any locations I'd want to build my house at, of course marking down the coordinates of any that take my fancy. If I pass by some sort of furry friend, I always like to make them my companion for a little bit of company. Now, if you happen to stumble across a village, fantastic, they're one of the best structures to find at the beginning of the world, but also make sure you keep a few of the villagers safe inside of their homes away from zombies, as they can come in very handy later on. Also, be sure to grab a few of the different crop types as they are primarily found in villages and hard to come by anywhere else. You could also set up a temporary base inside the village and move in for a bit whilst you get yourself a bit more situated, or you could go back to one of your scouted locations and set up a bit more of a permanent base there. For now, it doesn't have to be anything special. The main purpose is to hold all of your items, as I'm guessing your inventory might be a little packed by now, so craft a chest or two and dump everything in there. Now, with a much lighter load, you're ready to once again head back down to the mines. Just make sure you have everything you do need, like torches, wood, food and tools. The main goal of this mining session is to acquire 5 diamonds, 3 for a pickaxe and 2 remaining for your enchanting table. Whilst you're down in the caves, you can also use your diamond pick to gather some obsidian, at least 14 this time, as well as any other resources you come across like redstone, lapis or gold. If you're lucky enough, you may discover a mob spawner. Once you've secured it by placing some torches in the room, you're going to want to make a note of where it's located as this can be turned into a very helpful XP farm later on. 
It's going to take a few supplies, so I'd recommend coming back to it at another time. For now, what I like to do is return to the surface and get started on my first house. Before you begin that, however, there's a few small farms that I like to get underway. Remember earlier when I said to gather as much leather and sugarcane as possible that will go towards your enchanting setup? Well, assuming you have less than 45 leather and 135 sugarcane, you're going to need some more. That's the amount you need to craft enough bookshelves, by the way, for 30 levels, along with 90 wooden planks. So plant your sugarcane beside some water and leave it to grow. Wrangle some cows into a pen and make a small wheat farm so that you can continuously breed your cows. I like to set up these farms before working on my starter base so that I can keep checking in on them as I build. So keep going back to harvest and plant more sugarcane, keep going back to tend to your wheat farm, keep going back to breed up and slaughter your cows, all whilst gathering resources for your house along with building it. Once your house is built, hopefully you should have enough of the required resources to craft 15 bookshelves and an enchanting table. Hopefully you left enough space in your base to build it, if not I usually just shove it underground somewhere or perhaps you could build it separate from your house and cover it up so it looks cool. I seem to remember seeing a pretty good video for that somewhere. Before you go any further, now is a better time than any to get yourself organized. It's incredibly easy to get yourself in a muddle with all of the items in this game, so take the time to go through what you have and put them all in a designated chest. Now that you're a bit more set up in your world, I'd say now is a good time to head back down to that mob spawner you hopefully found. If you didn't, I'd maybe recommend going on another search for one because having an XP farm early on is really, really helpful. If you're not sure how to turn this spawner into a farm, there are plenty of tutorials out there on YouTube, but very simply, you need to big a dig room, big a dig, dig a big room, I'm going to keep that in. You need to dig a big room for them to spawn in, drop them into water, flow them into one spot, and then drop them into a killing room. And there you go, infinite XP. With your new XP farm, you can finally use your enchanting table to enchant your gear. It may be even worth moving it inside of the killing room. Bear in mind your bookshelves will break into books without silk touch, so be prepared to get a bit more wood to recraft them. Another thing I like to set up in my world is a strip mine. Sometimes I just want to go dig in for resources without the constant fear of mobs and a strip mine is perfect for this. Lastly, you can craft yourself a lectern and head to one of the villages in your world. Now, you may need to acquire a few emeralds before starting this, but if you want a really easy way to get mending, one of the best and rarest enchantments in the game, there's a little trick you can do with villagers. Simply find one of them without a job and continuously place a lectern, let them become a librarian, check their trades, and if it's not what you're looking for, break it and repeat the cycle until you get the elusive mending trade or whatever it is you're looking for. With this, you can get yourself a perfect set of enchanted tools ready to expand your base, go on more adventures, build lots of farms, or whatever it is you want to do in the game of unlimited opportunities. So that was roughly 50, I think. I don't know. I wasn't really counting. But either way, I hope this video has helped you out and that you enjoy playing in your new world. Thank you ever so much for watching, and I will see you in the next video. Bye for now.